Hey guys, welcome back. Terry from Smooth Watch up here. Welcome to build video number two in the series of this rather large, it's not a fun build, but um, it's a 1 16th scale Revell or Rebel Peterbilt 359 conventional truck. Um, <clears throat> when you last seen me doing anything on the model i'd put all the chassis together I'd put the air tanks on and um i was addressing the these front i'll just take these clumps off that's a bit while to dry um the front suspension um the leaf springs um lots and lots of flash lots of seam lines um especially when the joints go together so the next bit they told you to do was to put this uh, front cross beam axle on which I've done and clamped in place again seam lines all the way up so lots of dress up on it um, even later on when we get on these rear suspension arms they're covered in flash so I'm kind of fiddling away with those so although this model isn't hard to go together um, there is a lot of dress up and seam lines and flash so I've done it a little bit more um, so I've Take these all off the sprues and uh, got them ready for the next part of the build. So I've got the front axle on, which is the next part it tells you to do. Let's see if I can bring the camera in a little bit closer um, to the bench so you can see what's what. So yeah, <clears throat> yeah, really struggling for space with this one. So apologies on that. Trying to get my lamps down a bit so you can see what's happening. Yeah, so move all these to the side a bit, all my sandy sticks and everything, which I've had a really good workout. Um, this black stuff, when it sands, it's really, really dusty. So, yeah, here we go. So, this is our how far we've got just now on the front end. So, yeah, it tells you in the instructions to put the beam axle on. So, I've done that off camera. And I have glued it in place. It then goes on to tell us to put the front suspension arms on. They're both the same part number. Um, most of these parts are all black or semi-gloss black. They're saying to do the wee shoulder on here silver. Yeah, I could paint it and then stick it on. But no, I'm going to stick it on. And if I need to brush paint it, I'll brush paint it. But yeah, a lot of clean up again. So it tells me to take the shock absorber. And let's see if we can get this angled the right way. <laughs> it's massive. I've got it tucked under my arm here. Um, just trying to... So it tells us to orientate it that way around. And this little part here goes on this ledge. And this little pin is supposed to go... Ooh. Can we even see it? I'm trying to see where they want us to put that. Right, that goes onto there. Some of the instruction, uh, instructions aren't the clearest. Right. Hmm. Yeah, Terry. Come on, work it out. Right, I'm going to move my camera angle because I think I need to go to a more top-down um, view or we're not going to see anything here. So bear with me two seconds, I'm just going to change camera angle. I'll come back, this might be a better camera angle for you guys, hopefully. Um, finding the instructions quite confusing on how exactly the shock goes. But looking at this diagram, it's kind of showing that one goes to the inside, one goes to the outside, and what I have found, and this is a front, so they actually come down to the front, is that there's a little wedge shape there, and a pin, and there's a hole on the inside of the chassis leg there for the pin to go into. And then it just sits against this edge roughly in the middle. So that's one side. So let's see if we can get... Right, so if that's sitting in that hole, then that kind of just sits on there. There's no markings for it to sit for an exact placement. Hmm, okay. So let's just right, make life a wee bit easier on ourselves by... I'll dab a wee bit of glue down on the 
Yeah, not very clear on the instructions on that, but well, let's get some glue on the pin. Get this bit shoved in a bit. And this piece should rest on there, but try and get it kind of level, I would be assuming. That's strange. There's, there's no cutout or anything for it to go in. So I'm hoping this is where it's supposed to go. I'll just dab something on there. And let that kind of sit where I think it goes. I hope it goes. Hmm. Yeah, so it's not very clear. It's like got loads of arrows pointing in, put this bit here, put that bit there. But not really. Mm. It's not really grabbing either. Hmm. I would have thought that would have been more onto the... Hmm. It's grabbing a bit now. Still got a bit of movement in it. Definitely into that hole. I'll just put another wee touch of thin in there. And maybe some along the top of it. Yeah, so it's kind of showing it. <clears throat> right, put camera up. It's really hard to get this on camera because it's the chassis is so long. It appears to be sitting kind of there in line with that. I'm not worry too much about the glue in there. That'll that'll evaporate off. Right, so that's kind of that one, and then the other one, rather than it coming to the inside, goes to the outside. Um, it's a little hole in there, in there, so that bit of it goes into this one, on the outside, and then it comes up onto there again, on the other side of there, so yeah, we'll give it a go. Uh, not immediately obvious um right, okay where the pin goes that's fine but where to where to line that bit up so i'm just going to get some thin and oh, come here whack it in along there oh, that's not really on camera though that's a problem and then touch it down Hopefully get it lined up. Oh, my camera's went wonky. Apologies for me jammies. Um, uh, kind of, that's a bit of a strange setup. But if that's how it goes, that's how it goes. Right, I can drop that away down the front of the seat. Yeah, so that's sort of staying, kind of staying there. Hmm. Weird looking. I'm not a hundred percent sure if I've got that right. But it's not showing me anything different in the destructions. I'll just reinforce this but a little touch. Capillary of the glue's running everywhere, but um yeah, it's, it's a strange one. You would have thought they would have put a little notch on the on the axle. So I'm just assuming that, you know, it's going to go kind of level like that. So we've got one goes on the inside and one goes on the outside. It's, it's rather strange because you think they would both go on the inside, but there's nothing for the one on the inside to go into. Um, there is no hole on the inside of here. Yeah, a bit weird. Um, I think I've got it right. I think. I would have thought there'd have been some sort of notch out on the body of the thing um, to tell me if I've got it right, but it doesn't appear to be. So we've got two shock absorbers, but it does clearly show you one going to the one going to the outside. 
as I'm just looking at it, um, relative to the drawing, is this is the inside one. That's the one that goes on the inside, so I'm just kind of lined that up by eye. And uh, this one on the outside and the hole in there. So I've got the hole, the hole on the outside lined up there. But uh, yeah, th th there's nothing for it to slot into, so it's kind of a guesswork. Hmm, lovely. Cheers for that. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, okay, so white. Right, what next, Ravel? Right, it's asking for 106, which is a long steering rod. Um, with ends on it and little nuts and all the rest of it. So that's your track rod. Now, it is saying that that goes... Oh, it's not very clear on that either. It's saying... That there should be a hole there and a hole there just at the top of the axle and the nuts should be facing towards the body so with the nuts towards the body I'm then looking for uh, yeah I found them so on the drop link there's a drop link there are nuts on the track road ends okay and these track rod end nuts, going by the diagram, it should be facing the body and it goes into a hole in there and a hole in there. Right, so now I know where to go. That's trying to get them to go into place. <laughs> Nothing seems to fit very well on this. Everything needs a bit of a shugle and a conjole to get it where it's supposed to go, so I'm going to use the extra thin on that one and just give it a little squeeze in and hold it kind of perpendicular in line with it you can see that getting broken and knocked off later on and whilst that's grabbing I'll put some glue on this one I think the biggest problem with this is just it's, it's a big long chassis and trying to twirl it about so you can see what you're doing. So if I look down on it, I want it to be kind of level. That's going to take a wee while to set, I think. Hmm. Well, and it's coming loose. And see, that's where the extra thing I don't think is grabbing it enough. Give it a wee squeeze in now. Are we in at this side? We are, but the glue hasn't set. So we're trying to... Trying to angle this so that gravity helps us. With some light pressure. The rod even has a slight bow in it. So that's your main steering linkage or cross linkage. Because these on the real truck would turn. Oh, can we see where I am? Get some light in it, subject. You can see this lamp coming flying off the shelf at any moment now. A bit of a contrast in the white. Yeah, so these hubs hinge on that point. There. And this rod connects it up to the other side for the steering and pulls it back and forward. So just try to let that set, but um, it's not, <clears throat> as I say, it's it's not a bad kit. There's a bit of cleanup. Um, I'm used to doing Tammy and stuff like that, where it fits a lot better. So if there's a pin going into a hole, uh, the pin generally fits the hole. It's not like 10 sizes too small. It's even touching my, my camera boom there. Yeah, so letting that set, that pin doesn't exactly fit that hole. It's slightly smaller than it, so it doesn't in like you would get in a Tamiya. It's just like kind of, that's kind of where it goes. Yeah, so, okay. 
So we'll let that sit just now. I'll let the rest against the camera boom. Maybe. Um, so what's after that? We've got some side riggers, outriggers to go. I'm just letting, letting gravity grab that before I take it off the level because it'll fall that way or it'll fall that way. So just having a look at this, it's telling us to go for part 230, which is an outrigger. And I think it's, right, we've got two outriggers. There's that one, which I think is 230. And then the one with a big chunk in it, which is 146. So, this is the front, this is the front right. So let's come round to the front right, that's per the picture. Uh, front right, and there's two pins in the inside. And two holes on, on the chassis leg there. So basically it's saying with that piece up, that goes on to there, like that, and goes in there. Right, okay, that's cool. So I'll just put a couple of wee, zhud, zhud, a wee bit of it, zhud, 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 zhud. Stick this in there. See, see. Right, as I say, I'm hitting all my lights and everything. I will be look, see if it's kind of straight, just run a wee bit extra up there, a wee bit extra up there. Now I'm pretty sure this is one of the outriggers, I'm just going to be squish, that um, there's a body piece goes on at the side bit at the back of the wheel. Um, just for being doubly sure. And the wee knob at the back. Yeah, I think that's that one's going to be all right. So that's on okay. This is kind of drying now, so it's still going to be wet for a bit. But. So then there's another outrigger that goes on the other side. Again, that's got a couple of holes in it. So let us just see. Yeah, it's showing. And this piece goes up to the top, so it goes on there, like that. Okay, so let's, let's get an extra thin again. Round the hole, round the hole, a wee bit of splash up there, grab it and whack it on. Okay, so just give that a wee press in and then I shall go a wee up the side there with the extra thin. We touch there, we touch there. Now we squeeze. Flip it over. I'll just catch the two wee, two wee bits. Yeah, it's a bit of a big, big beast to try and get this all in frame. Right, so that's on, that's on, that's on. Two side riggers is on. Okay, so that's that bit. Now what's it telling us to do? Okay, so we're now looking at... See, it keeps flipping the picture about and you have to keep getting the orientation. So it's looking at this piece. Okay. And this piece goes on to this piece. Have I not cut that piece out? Probably not, knowing my luck. I haven't, so that's piece 156. Right, so I'm going to leave my chassis up on its end just now to let them set. I shall find part 156 and I shall go and glue it and I'll let this set a little bit and when we come back then hopefully I might have a better idea of what I'm doing. Yeah, so I've, I've forgot to cut out the part 156 which I think is because of the way it goes on the side is the um, steering box and it is, I bet you that's it there. And the numbers can be a bit, ah, I see. It tells you 156, but it's not actually on there. It's just kind of near the part. So, yeah. Um, judging by all the other parts that I've done so far, this will probably need a bit of cleanup. If it doesn't need much cleanup, I'll just keep this video running. But if it looks, if it needs a bit of cleanup, then I shall uh, 
go off camera and do it. But yeah, let's see. I'll just gently dress that back. Yeah, my lights start to go wibbly wobbly. I'm going to buy myself some better lights when I get a bit more money. These are just two desk lamps and I'm struggling a bit with the darker weather. It's not looking too bad. Where was the other knob? There's a bit of flash on it here and there. There's one. So I'll just take my new sandy stick and just give it a bit of buff because all the sands, all the, all the sands, oh, there's the other knob there. Um, everything on this has got sinkage and all that on it, but I suppose it's an older rebel kit. I'm used to building Tamiya. It's not going to stop me making the kit. We shall overcome. It's, there's a lot of dress-up work on this. So, yeah, that's where people maybe go, oh, I don't like rebel kits because they don't go together well. <sighs> a bit of fiddle. But uh, they do go together. They just need a bit more clean-up and work. All right, okay, so that must be the steering box part. So... It goes on in this part here, so I'll just get the, the thing orientated the right way again. Right, so obviously here we're looking at, there's a steering arm there, so this must be the steering box. And it goes, let's try to get the orientation right. There are two things. That way, like that. Is that correct? It's all a bit, hmm. It's all kind of a bit hit or miss for me. Right, it's got a wee bit of angle on it. I'm just going to check that that's right. So why would that be aiming up towards that? What does it show there? It's not even very clear. Yeah, but it is at an angle. See, you would think the top of that, there would be, that's now fouled by that body piece, would be where the steering rack goes. Not the rack, using the wrong word. Where the steering column would go. So, yeah. Attention to detail. Uh, we drop a glue in there and a wee bit around there just to stick this on. Yeah, so this is a steering box because lorries have a steering box rather than a steering rack. But where it's showing, where's my pointy stick? Where it's showing the steering column, that little bit there, that would go up. There's no hole or anything there, so how do you connect a rod to that to go up into the cab for the... Yeah. Kind of showing some accuracy, as in there is a steering box on it, but that wouldn't be lined up with that. Yeah. Okay, Terry. Enough of that. Right, okay. So it then tells us to take the drop link, which is this part. It goes onto the steering box, and it goes onto... The steering arm. Hopefully this is coming up on camera. The steering arm there. So basically this is going into there. So this is the part that gives the instruction from the steering wheel, which is not mounted in the right bit, in my opinion. But the steering wheel's turned. It goes down through the steering box, pulls this arm back and forwards, pulls that hub back and forwards, and because that hub's going back and forward with that link rod, it moves that one. Quite a simple steering system. Really, really antiquated. So let's get this on its side. So this goes into the box, which is a nice tight fit, and this should just sit on there. Lovely. Right. So, bit of a fiddle because of the size of the thing. But uh, I'm trying to do it on camera. So I shall put a tiny little bit in the steering box bit in there to grab that. So it stays where it's supposed to go. 
and then I shall put some on there on that bit and just hold it for a minute till it goes off so there we have it's because it's black I can't actually see what you're seeing on camera so hopefully it's coming up so in theory apart from this is slight like that if you can imagine that this part comes down to the steering wheel goes into that box through a, a series of pinning gears turns that lever back and forward which moves that back and forward yeah onto this idler arm which in turn pushes that or pulls that which makes this go yeah yeah the steering doesn't actually work on this so when that's turning like that that rod then pushes this one across and turns the other one the other way a really simple steering setup um then it goes on to what's after that i've got some more parts cut out okay so on to the top of these outriggers this way up um i'm worried about that dropping down a bit so i might just lay because i don't know if it's dry yet is it still sinking or is it all right i'm just going to lay a thinny stick under it There we go. Just to stop it dropping. It's probably at the wrong angle to angle, but uh, yeah, that'll, that'll stop that arm dropping down. Plus, I've got it in this position. Um, and it's now wanting me to put another piece across, which is this piece, which looks like some sort of anti roll bar. Um, and again, so it's shown it that way towards the front. That sits on the top on two pins and glue that and that onto there. Straight, straightforward enough looking. Bit of glue in there. Bit of glue on there. Hopefully you can see it. And this goes. What does it? What is happening here? Right, take that out of the way. That goes on there, like that. Uh huh. Ah, oh, this might um, pull some of the chassis together because it's slightly. Mind I've seen the chassis was still a wee bit twisted. Oh, it's not really want to go on. I know there's two different size holes. Let's try it again just in case I've blobbed the glue on. So as you can tell, I'm having one or two wee problems with this. <laughs> um, I expected that, it's a rebel cut. Um, why isn't that going on to that? Or is it that way around? But then, that's not the way it shows it on the picture, is it? Or is it? No, it definitely shows I'm going towards the front. I wonder if it's just flash and shite. Um, I've had a lot of bother with flashing these, so let's just clean that up a bit. Clean that bit up a bit. Same with that bit. Same with that bit. Where's my wee round? I've got a wee round fire somewhere here. Let's just uh, give that a wee tweak. Give that a wee tweak. Yeah, the picture's definitely shown it. That's towards the front. As if the bits are going off towards there. Up the way, rather than down the way. Yeah. Let's see if I can get it to fit. Because oh. it's being a little bum. That needs to be a wee bit more... Because in real life that would catch. Mm. 
<laughs> He's not liking us. He's not wanting to go on. Ah, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Have I got it? That one on there. That one on there. I think I've got it. Yeah, it looks like something for it. It looks like an anti roll bar for the suspension. Yeah. Some of the bits aren't fitting as well as one would expect, but. It is fitting. So it's on. So that's anti roll bar on. Which has such a close tolerance to the steering arm there that they would actually foul. So yeah, okay. <laughs> but okay. Yeah, some some of the actual detailing of it is quite incorrect uh, from a mechanical standpoint. Um but I'll live with that. Right, so that's that. So then it goes on to tell you to um, take the back of the drum and never into this one and take this part in which does slot in it nicely. So this is for the brake actuator which just clips in there and then there's a little part where there are three tiny little dots on here that locate the centre of that. Now I'm not gluing all those together because those three parts were different colours. Um, but there is a key out in them and it's slightly offset and they can only go on one side of the axle. Um, again, they don't fit very well and I'm not gluing it in place. It does ask you to glue it in place, but that basically goes on there like that. That's one of them. And obviously your little um, air actuator for the air brake would be glued to that. Not going to glue that on or that on or that to it at the moment. And I've got the other one to make up. Um, and then it goes on to the rear, the rear end. Uh, we're in a half an hour on this already. Jings, right. Um, so it gets you to make two of those up. As I say, that they have the colour callouts. E is like a silver, B is like a semi-gloss black, and E. That's a different colour, that's a different colour, and that. So there's no point gluing them together just now. Um, I'm just trying to get as much of the chassis and sub-assemblies together as I can. So you get the other one on, tells you to build that one up and stick it on the other side. And it's getting you to move on to the rear end, which I already know there's a ton of flash on these little arms, uh, which are almost like small leaf springs, half leaf springs with uh, the airbags. So I'm going to have a ton of dress up to do on those. Um, so I'm going to go off camera and dress all those up, glue them together. Um, and then we're on to the, the link between the leaf spring on a little armature onto the, the airbag part with a shock absorber. And then we're on to putting the rear diffs together. So I think I'll do a lot of that off camera because uh, there's an awful, awful lot of clean up on this. Um, and then we're going into, you know, it's times four for the suspension. And there's two diffs at the back because there's two driven axles. And then we're into uh, all the brake units and putting the drums on and then putting them in the back and stuff like that. So I'll see how far I get with that because the next section we're on to making the engine. And that's half an hour on this little bit. So I haven't really got very far. Um, but my other video was like 50 minutes. I'm just trying to show that this, this isn't going together quite as well as I, I'd anticipated. I'm going to keep this at the 30 minutes. So... Um, yeah, it's not fitting all that well. But we will get there. We will modify it and we shall make it fit. We shall overcome. So basically we're building all that front end of suspension and steering up there. We're now going to go and it'll be the next video. We're going to build up the rear end with the four airbags and all the rest of it in the back axle. So rather than uh, make this another hour's video, we're at half an hour. I would say, uh, I'll cut it at this, and um, in the next one we'll do the back end. So, as usual, any comments, leave them in the comment section down below. Terry from Smooth Workshop, as always, happy modelling.
Bye.